Hi, I'm Luke from Button Pushes United. Have you ever sifted and browsed and searched through loads and loads of sample packs only to be disappointed by the sonic palette available to you? And no matter how many sample packs you download, that snare just never seems to fit. Well, I certainly have, but I don't anymore. And it's all thanks to sample mutilation. Sample manipulation. In today's lesson, we're gonna learn how to manipulate our samples into giving us exactly what we want by just destroying and mangling them until they produce only the sounds we desire for our tracks. Let's get started. Let's have a listen to our whack ass sample right here. Yep, nothing even remotely musical about that, uh, but I want you to bear with us here and see what kind of tools we can use to create something more workable. So the first thing you want to do is grab your sample, control D, create a new copy so we keep this old one here nice and fresh, and we can come back to it later. Hit shift tab to go into your sample editor, and let's see what happens if we can just stretch it right out beyond any recognition at all, so that that way in order for us to realize what sample it used to be, we would actually have to go and get its dental records. What's that sound like now? Yep, that's that's sounding like something. Uh, so why don't we go ahead and pitch that up, see what that's like. Ah, uh, yeah. Now, I'm thinking we could go ahead and uh, maybe we could reverse that. We could just split its guts right inside out like a Thanksgiving turkey, and maybe that'd sound a little better. Okay, yeah, I think that's a nice transition effect. Shift tab back out. Turn off the grid, and we're just going to slide that right up to the end. Yep, that's going to work for me. Now, we actually still don't have any beats, so the next technique we're going to learn is chopping. We're just going to chop and mutilate these little mop samples into workable beats that we can use. And the first thing we're going to need is a kick. So I think what we can do is that we can just go in here, just chop its limbs off right at the top. Just take a little off the top right there and go back in here inside the sample editor. See what that's like. Yep, still just sounds like a booty butt mop. There you go, but now you pitch down, starting to get some kind of kick, kick action. I'm all about it. So why don't we go ahead, let's create a new track. Let's do that and drag this guy right in here. Create a nice little four beat. Four on the floor, they call it. That's what we're gonna do. Uh, drag it right to the end. Boom, 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 control D, control D, uh, okay. Got all of our kicks now, got our loop. And let's go ahead and let's just control F, EQ, grab that stock EQ8, because it's the best EQ in the world, comes right with Ableton. We're just gonna bring all that high frequency information out, because no one wants to hear the kick that much. And hear what that's like. There you go. We have a kick drum of some nature. It's kind of a thing, but we still don't have any snares. I mean, if we want to chop some samples into little tiny pieces and we ain't got no snares, no one's, no one's going to care. We're just going to be heartless, cold murderers. And in order for us to bring any sense of depth to our track, we need to have some snare. Uh, so we're going to go ahead and chop it right back down again. Right there off the top. Don't need any of that. And we're just going to go ahead and pitch them right up. Maybe, maybe, maybe eight semitones. Maybe that's too much. I don't I don't know. I need to hear that without the kick drum just blaring in my face. Okay, maybe maybe a little lower, maybe that's a little too high. I think I think five. I think five was the magic number today. Okay, alright, we can we can work with that. So we're gonna make a new audio track. Drag our snare down there on the twos and fours. Cause if you're a self respecting drummer, you won't play your snare drum on any other beat. Just two and four, forever and ever, because no one cares if you can play seven, eight rhythms or polyrhythms backwards or anything like that. Nope, it's just they want four on the floor, and th th there you go. It's right, well, you know, if you unsolo the original track, maybe you can actually hear what's happening. Okay, that's 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 the thing, and it, he's going to need some EQ love, too. You know, after he's been split apart and removed from his family, he's going to need a little bit of tending, too. And what we're gonna wanna do with that is solo him so we can hear what's happening. And this little spike right here, we just, no one no one wants to just oh, get, go away. Just, let's dial that down. 
Maybe give a little love to the high end. Right around three or four K and we'll, we'll see where that takes us. Got a little reverb. Yeah, there you go. It's kind of, it's nice. Yeah. Okay. But our beat needs some kind of pattern over top of it so we can actually know where everything is in time. I mean, without a ride or a hi-hat, we're just lost in space and time and we have, we have no idea where this beat is. And so what we're going to do is we're going to grab this guy again and we're just, again, we're going to shorten it because we just want little one shots from our, uh, we don't, we don't ask too much of our drum samples. Go right in here, flip them all the way up. That's a, yep. Again, you got to not keep those things soloed. Otherwise the people watching the YouTube video can't hear you, Luke. Yep. That's, that's a hi-hat sample. Now it's just, it's just pitched up and I'm going to be the next Martin Garrix just by freaking flipping samples up and down. And you can too. All right, happy little hi hats here. Yep, just control D that shit all the way to the end. Now we got a nice little house loop, right? Do we? Ah, uh, yes. But the 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 hi hat here is just raping my ears. Just ugh, can't. You know, maybe it's insensitive. To just put rape there. We're just gonna put annoying hi hat. Bitch. Alrighty, grab that EQ again because there's just frequencies in there that I just don't care for at all, like this one right here. Just go away. Okay. Turn on the bottom. Yep. yep. There you. There you go. Just get the fuck out of my life. Okay. Um, that that's gonna work. That that could be our beat for the moment. Uh, I'm sure we'll come back to it, but let's go ahead and try and get some melodic elements in here because our beat by itself just isn't going to sell any records. Let's come out here and try try and create some kind of melodic tone here. We're going to go ahead and stretch them right out again. Yep, that sounds good. And what we can do is that we can move into the tones algorithm because the complex algorithm, while it's nice for most applications, we're taking a lot of creative liberties today and the complex algorithm just doesn't believe in those types of freedoms. There, there you go. Let's see now we have some kind of melodic information. What we can do is create a simpler by hitting Control Shift T and then Control F, dropping the simpler right in there. There you go. That's nice. And we're just going to drag them in there and we're just going to see what that's like. But what happened was when we dragged that in there, it, it just took the old original crappy sample that we didn't want anything to do with. So what we have to do is hit Control J. And we need to drag him right in there now, because now we've created a new sample. But I'm just not a fan of that that popping at the beginning. I just want that that granny tone sound. Oh, yes. That's starting to starting to become something. We have the attack up. Drag him a little further out. Let's uh, let's see what happens here. Okay, yeah, there there you go. Oh, uh, fuck that! Cut off my little sample, or my little uh, my little performance here. Uh, no, we want the original one right here. Get back in there. And, and we really just need those first four bars, quite honestly. Or first two bars. All right, sweet. So now we have some melodic information and uh, we can, can hear a little bass here. It's just awful that everything is so loud right now because we need to do mixing and quite honestly, we just don't have the time for that. So we're just gonna drop everything down. All right. But we still don't have any real melodic information. We have, we have a nice bass tone, but we need some kind of chords or some kind of character to add in here. So let's go ahead and just duplicate this guy. Let's see if I can't, uh, you know, totally just screw it up. Well, okay, where'd that take us? Oh, 
Okay, that that's that's I like that first one there. And let's just drag it back. Fuck you, Adobe. We don't have time for this. Okay. And so now we could just go ahead and start making some edits here. So what do we have here? We have our, our little uh, booty kick, our little snapple snare. And and let me just start uh, putting this thing together. I mean, that's, that snare is going to need a little more reverb. Give me some delay time. There you go. Ah, uh, yeah. That, that lead could always use a little reverb. Maybe we could uh, EQ him, so maybe we could actually know what know where he lives. Maybe a little bass boost here. Ugh. Oh, that's scary. All right, I, th I think we're done with the sample for today. So let's recap. Today we learned four murderous yet effective ways to manipulate our samples. We can stretch them apart beyond recognition, reverse their guts inside out, chop them into tiny little pieces, and pitch them up and down into oblivion. Be sure to comment below about your sampling experiments and if you have any questions about how to beef up your tracks. And remember to subscribe for more sample packs, tutorials, and more musical adventures. Thanks for watching and do more than press play.